precious Lord has won my heart and never from him will I part. My precious Lord has won my heart and never from him will I part. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord anymore. My name is Betty Arthur Brown. My family moved from San Francisco to Los Angeles and came to Angeles Temple in 1925, the summer of 1925. So I grew up here. I was in the children's program. I uh, wore a cape and uniform uh, like Sister did. And uh, I was privileged to come and sit by her sometimes because I was, I can't think of the word, you know. Mascot. Yes. Mascot? I was mascot. So, should we retake that part? No, that's fine. Okay. And, uh, tell us what mascot is. Uh, mascot, um, she chose little children uh, to lead the parades of the children, and I was the one, the little girl, and then there was a little boy, Miller Freeman, who wore a Scottish outfit. And when we had praise of the children's program around the temple, around the front of the, of the uh, church, then we were the ones in front. Uh, then I was in the children's program. We had um, a children's orchestra, children's choir. Well, the orchestra, we, we actually played kazoos that looked like instruments. So <laughs> it was a, a lot of fun as we were humming into these kazoos. Uh, grew up um, in daily vacation Bible school. Uh, and then in the youth program, I was a soloist, played the viber harp, um, and uh, was one of the soloists for the youth program. We had radio programs, and uh, um, we had a program um, on Sunday night called the 99 Club, where uh, 99 of us or so, however many of us there were, went around uh, after the service on Sunday night to see anyone we could see that was new here that we didn't recognized and especially we had a lot of servicemen at that time so we would bring them all over right here to uh, what was called the Parsons where our sister used to live and have a big sing-along and have refreshments and give those op an opportunity to know about Jesus and how much he loved them and what a joy it was to serve him and know that he would be with them in, in their deepest and most troubling times as they were in the service. But I grew up here, I had a trio, we sang, sang in fact for sister's last sermon that she preached in Angela's Temple. Uh, we sang just before her message and she came up and put her arms around us and said, I wish I could take you girls with me to Oakland where I'm having this big citywide meeting, but of course I know you're in school and um, we're, we weren't able to um, go with her. But that was the last time we saw her and loved her. But through the years I was in some of the um, illustrated sermons and special events that we had. We were either little angels, I was in the accordion band, I was in the vocal group. So we just, uh, our life was Angela's temple and sister. This was an everyday experience. We had Bible study one night, we had a youth service another night, we had Sunday morning and Sunday night, and then other special outings. But you know, the wonderful thing is through, through those years, my dear mother, uh, Sister Hal Smith, um, was first um, in charge of the City Sisters program where they would uh, go out um, and help people pray with them where they needed to have somebody come to their home. And then later she was in charge of the commissary where hundreds of thousands of people were given food and clothing and encouraged and prayed with uh, through, the, through the years. And then uh, sister asked her if she would teach divine healing. So every day between 1 and 2.30, um, 
my mother taught divine healing to prepare them with the word and with faith to build their faith uh, to go uh, to where sister would pray for them on Wednesday afternoon and Saturday night. Those were the divine healing services. I saw many people come in in ambulances looking like it was the end of their life and see God heal them, get up off of the gurney and uh, walk and walk back to the ambulance to go back. I saw many people take off um, their, well, you know, they took off casts, they took off braces, and um, you, I saw actually where people were extended with tumors, I saw those tumors disappear. I mean, miracles all the time, and what a blessing to know and see that God was working, was filled with the Holy Spirit at a very young age, and I thank the Lord for every moment that I had there. Later then, I went to Bible school, here to Life Bible School. It was here, right here on the property, and um, uh, fell in love with a young man that was from the Portland Four Square Church. Um, and uh, we got married in Angeles Temple. This was after Sister had already passed away, but uh, Dr. Harold Jeffries was the one that came down from Portland for Square Church to marry us. Um, and we went out in, in service uh, in evangelistic work. But what a joy. There are so many stories that I would love to tell you, but time doesn't really permit. But I'm thankful for every moment that I had growing up from, from a, a little baby until I was married and out in the work. Then later we came back, my husband and I came back, and he was, we were youth ministers here, had um, a large youth group, helped build the, um, and broke ground for the youth center that was here, and saw many young people give their life to the Lord. Chuck Smith was one of them in our, um, in our group and married one of our girls, Catherine. Uh, and, I, and I've seen just so many wonderful opportunities. My understanding, you actually met your husband right here in this parsonage. Is that yeah, correct? Yes, I did. So tell, tell me how that happened. Where, where were you? Where, well, how that well these, I was very active in everything that was going on here. And uh, these uh, young men came down from the Northwest. And uh, um, Paul Arthur was one of them. And um, and uh, Roy McEwen, his dad had uh, pastored a four square church up in Washington. And we met them because they were, they, they'd come down for Bible college. And uh, so it didn't happen right away, but um, he was going with somebody and I was going with somebody, but the Lord brought us together and um, we went together. We met right here in the parsonage. In fact, then later on, when we came back as, uh, as youth directors, his office was upstairs. So when I go up there, I have many memories of being here in the parsonage, here at school. The Iron Gate, you know, that's out here to the side of the building, that was a meeting place for everybody. We meet at the Iron Gate, you know. Uh, but um, what a joy it was um, to see the young people come from all over the country to go to Bible college and then out in service. And many went um, to missions, South America, Central America, Africa, the Orient. And um, what, what a thrill it was to know that we all had a part in sharing the gospel of Jesus, the healer, the savior, the coming king, and the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. What a joy. And you know, I look back and, and think of uh, I was in church on December 7th uh, when we were bombed at Pearl Harbor. I remember sister stopped and announced it. Somebody came in and told her. So we, we prayed immediately for all those that might have been injured or families that would get that notice. But um, uh, this, was, this was our life and I'm thankful for it. Oh, I wish that you might know the joy of it. The preaching the gospel, the seeing the thousands wending their way down the altars to kneel at the feet of Jesus, the crucified. And now, after all of these years, we have come to crown our labors, beautiful Angela Temple. This magnificent building, the largest sitting capacity church in the American continent, where we have 16,000 members, a Sunday school of 4,500 children, 800 branch churches, and the work spreading. 
today, on the first day of Earth, Los Angeles, California, with its thousands of loving friends and these great armfuls of roses on this my anniversary. Amy Semple McPherson, and the name Angela Semple, has sometimes, I guess to our friends, it seems synonymous with trouble and with death. So, um, she was probably the very first mega church pastor that was female yes, in America. Yes. Um, did you see where she had challenges with that? Did, 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 um, you know, maybe the religious people come against that? Did you see that type of thing? Even yes, as a child? yes. I, I remember there was one very outspoken, uh, uh, gentleman, a minister in a denomination that um, really um, had his had his piece about about her, about women, and all that. But you know, anytime God is moving, there is always something that comes up to try to um, pull it down. But um, that's what the word says. We're going to have uh, there'll be wars and battles but that he brings us through, and she did. She, she didn't answer those people. She didn't um, talk, talk back about them. She just gave it all to the Lord all the way through. And even when people told stories that were so untrue about her, um, I know she called my mother and said, you, you don't believe those things they're putting in the paper about me. He said, she said, of course not, dear. Of course we, we trust and know that you are where God wants you to be and doing what God wants you to do. So yes, there was. Amen. Um, let me ask you, so she obviously believed in the miraculous. She Absolutely. She believed in signs, wonders, and miracles. And, and although I, 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 I do movies about a lot of different things, so one, one of the things I, I have been called to do is movies about um, the supernatural and um, do you do you think that that sister Amy believed that we could raise the dead oh I'm sure she did I she thought everything is possible with Jesus nothing is impossible and um, and she believed it now there may have been some raised from the dead in her ministry but I don't know of those or hadn't heard of those uh, but people were raised from death's door often and, and people that could hardly walk and, and of course we're seeing that now in, in a greater way but uh, hers was very early on and you know, I, in fact I don't even know of any other mega churches in that time. Yeah, you know, I, I think one of the interesting things is it's not only was she a female preacher but she was a female preacher that had a megachurch mm -hmm. when megachurches weren't common, right. when female preachers weren't common, no. and obviously female preachers in a megachurch that wasn't common, and then to add another level to it, is she operated in sign wonders and miracles. And so that was like a whole other level um, that, but, but the interesting thing is that the history shows that she never she just let her actions do the talking. Absolutely, she had faith, and um, and she she let others see that and build their faith. In fact, for a young woman to build her own radio station, that was unheard of. It was the first Christian radio station that I know of, and we could check that. Uh, but it was KFSG, and uh, my folk, my mother had a program there, my sister had a program. My sister, who was um, a girl evangelist and also a um, pastor, pastor's wife and a pastor, um, uh, was uh, in Bible college here, as my mother was, and uh, others that you will meet even today that uh, went through um, the Bible college and went out into ministry. There's people serving all over the world today that went to Life Bible College, but are not necessarily still in the four square, you know, churches. But it's spread out all over the world. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, so just so looking back, um, what was the most amazing story? And by by the way, I, I have to say this: even though you may not know of somebody who she raised physically from the dead. There are millions of people out there that were raised 
spiritually from the dead. Oh, absolutely. By her hand, directly or indirectly, because it's still happening today. Absolutely. People are still moved by what she did. The Four Square Church still, still, you know, is prominent in the charismatic Pentecostal movement, and um, so even if it wasn't her hand, it was her influence. And I think how you know one of the things we have a, a, a gentleman in our church who man he he adores Amy Sybil McPherson. I remember even three years ago, I was uh, in our supernatural school. I said, who who is it that you like? to read about who is it that inspires you and he had just started coming his very first answer Amy Simple McPherson uh -huh. and um, he still talks about he talks about even like her feeding programs and how she was in, you know she has inspired him to want to reach out to those that don't have things that's right and really isn't that more important than raising the physically dead is to raise the spiritually dead Absolutely. to raise those that are, have nothing back into life and showing them that god gives his life and life abundantly so what are your thoughts on on how many people that she has impacted since her ministry to even now 2018. <laughs> oh that that would be a guess i'm sure that it goes into the millions because it's spread all over the world and you know, I I can still remember they. Uh, she had a big platform built down in Los Angeles, and she uh, helped raise bonds for our country during World War II. And um, she was avid to uh, help our country, our city, our the surroundings, the police department. They even had people that worked with um, the, the police department um, to help where they would say, now this family really has a need, here's a family with children and the father just died and they have nothing. And you know, this, is, this was the response all the way through. Whatever we can do to raise people to know, um, first to meet their needs and then to let them know that Jesus loved them and he would change their lives completely. That's so good, that's really good. Um, so share with us uh, maybe your favorite story that you remember, um, maybe your, the, your, your favorite event that you saw happen during a service or maybe it's something that's more private. Um, what's your favorite memory of Amy Simple McPherson? Oh my, there are so many. Um, you know, she had so much joy and um, uh, in, her, in her illustrated sermons, she lived them with the, you know, she, would, it, she didn't just get up and preach from a, from a stand, you know, but she, she lived it. She wrote beautiful songs. Um, she did the, um, the oratorios or operettas, um, uh, and those were wonderful, and I was in some of those, had the privilege of being in them. But, um, but all in all, with the beautiful music, the orchestration, the organ, and um, uh, all of that was the message that Jesus loved them and would change their lives. And so with all the beauty, and I can still remember some of those songs um, now of uh, that of her of her operettas because they had a message and uh, you know there's so many things uh, I would be going here there and everywhere and another interesting thing we had train rallies to San Diego and Santa Barbara where kids from four square churches all over would come and go and she'd go with us and and um, and uh, have, a, have a parade through the town with banners and everything. Uh, it was a message all the way around, you know. Uh, it was fun. We had camps. Summer camps were wonderful. There was a lot of, a lot of young people called to um, missions and to um, Bible college and to service for the Lord in our camps. So, you know, it was just, there were so many things that Sister had a part in that uh, lifted everyone. Her, her spirit and love and 
power of the Holy Spirit within her was a lift to everyone that she worked with. Did Amy have a presence when she walked in the room? You know, sometimes when you hear about um, the generals and and just people that had, you know, had these larger than life uh, ministries and personalities and, and anointings, you hear about when they walk in the room that you can literally feel the anointing and the presence on them. Um, you know, the um, some of the arrangement in the temple is a little different now because they took out the ramps that were down either side of the auditorium. But she used to come in that upper uh, ramp, which is right here off the parsonage, and walk down. And uh, people were were praising God for the fact that she was there. And yes, there was a, there was a presence about it. It was the presence of the Holy Spirit, you know. Um, and um, and she uh, lit up the room. That's good. What do you think made her different than, than other people? I just think the calling of God on her life, what she'd been through as a, as a young widow. Um, you know, she was, <laughs> she was brave for her to stand up on a chair to get people to come and just be looking up into the sky and people would get a, a crowd around her and then she'd say, follow me, and she'd get them into a tent or wherever she was and she'd preach to them. So she was bold. She wasn't afraid um, to um, do whatever it took to get people in so she could share God's love with them. What do you, th in your memory, what is the most phenomenal uh, thing that you remember her doing? Um, something, you know, she was out of the box. Oh, yeah. She was way outside of the box. And you could, I mean, you can point to things like, you know, her relationship with Hollywood. You can say, you know, like her operas. And I mean, you can point to all kinds of things. But like, what for you, what was the most, you know, outside of the box thing that you've seen her do, and even if it's supernatural, you know, like, you know, I don't know, you, you know, because one of the interesting things to me was to find out that, you know, she had Smith Wigglesworth, she had all kinds of people come here to preach, and Smith was crazy. Smith would punch somebody in the stomach, he would, you know, you know, he'd slam dead people up against the wall and tell them to breathe, you know, and, and, um, so birds of a feather flock together. So I know, you know, she, she had to be even outside of the box with ministry. For you, what was the most outside of the box thing about her? Well, um, I think of her praying for the sick. I don't remember any, uh, you know, she didn't push people down or anything like that. But um, I remember uh, seeing her as she was praying, just believing God and, uh, and hanging in there until victory was won and uh, so many people were healed in the service and praising God and uh, people being filled with the Holy Spirit in other services you know um, she and she would go into song sometimes right in the middle of her message uh, sing a part of a song that tied in um, but you know uh, there's so many different things. It's hard to pinpoint one particular thing, but um, she was, whatever we were doing that she was a part of, I remember her, even a bunch of us were caroling, and she invited us into her home when she moved from here, up near Silver Lake. She came to the door, greeted us, and we were all so thrilled, and, and uh, had us come in and gave us hot chocolate and cookies and we sang in there and she just told us how much she loved us and was thankful that we were out encouraging people by singing Christmas carols for them, a lot of shut-ins and sick we went to sing for. But I mean, she was in so many different parts of our lives, you know, from camp to uh, big rallies to the divine healing services, to her illustrated services, and to her preaching services, because um, they were all full of life and power of the Holy Spirit. What do you think today, if Amy was here, what do you think that she would say to the church in America? 
I think she would say um, we need to get going about our father's business. We can't lay back, we can't be satisfied just to be in church on Sunday and uh, go the rest of the week without doing anything. We need to be winning people to Jesus. We need to be telling them about the miracles that have happened in our life and what he can do in their lives. And I think she would just be doing um, more than she ever did. She, would, she gave everything to what she was doing for the Lord. I know as, as a little child, it wasn't that she prayed for me, but as a, a five-year-old, I was healed of diabetes and Bright's disease. Uh, we were at the beach with family from Washington, and uh, my mother said, I came to her and said, Mama, if you would have taken me to church tonight, Jesus would have healed me. And so we drove from the beach, to, we drove home to Hollywood, got some clothes, a washcloth and a towel, changed my clothes. We got here just as the service was dismissing. People were standing and a Dr. Gurdon, a medical doctor who God had raised from a deathbed um, that was a minister, was preaching. And he said, wait a minute, I see this man running down the aisle with this little girl. And daddy told him what I'd said. He came over to the stairs on the platform and he said, Jesus, Put his hand out. Jesus healed this little girl. She has faith. Just we believe you're going to do it. And he said, good night, everybody. And when I got out to the car, I said, see, Mama, I told you Jesus would heal me. And after going back to four specialists, they said, all, all we can say, each one had their own thing to say, but it's, it's a miracle, or I don't understand it but she doesn't have diabetes or the disease, kidney disease anymore. So, you know, I've gone all through her life knowing that as I filled out uh, health things in school, for school and college, yes, I had it, but I was healed of it, so I'm thankful. Well, the impact of, on our lives made all the difference. My sister became a child evangelist and a minister. My uh, mother um, gave her complete life to the Lord to serve Him and did serve Him for, until the Lord took her and they delivered her right here to the, um, uh, to the 500 room and she'd already gone to be with the Lord in a short taxi cab. Um, and you know, and each of us in our own way, my ministry predominantly was music, was singing as a soloist, and I've been blessed to um, have a part in that. But my whole family, my father sang, we had a radio broadcast, my brother served the Lord. I can just, and my nieces and nephews, some of them were Foursquare pastors. And so, you know, I really praise the Lord all the way around because it's, it's touched our lives in more ways than I could even count. And I'm thankful for that. Well, you know, uh, the Ministry of Music here um, at Angelus Temple gave great opportunities to, um, we had a, not only the big choir that sang on Sunday, but the youth choirs, um, uh, also, I played the vibrant harp in the orchestra. Um, uh, had a trio. We had uh, quartets, quintets, music. You know that uh, was glorified to God. And you know some of the things um, that we had here as uh, as a youth group. We had fabulous parties uh, and the holidays uh, where. Uh, we all had a lot of fun. We were all able to bring in unsaved friends and so many were accepting the Lord at the end of the parties. And we had great times and then um, more wonderful times because of the spiritual impact at the end. So, you know, I thank the Lord. As, as I said, there's so many things. When, you, when I look through my life from the time I was very little, to the time I was married and had children, and it was and it, and this impacted my life and our lives in a great way, and I'm thankful for that. Even as um, in uh, Bible college, 
we had a trio and quartet and we traveled all through California, um, uh, Oregon, Nevada, Montana, um, representing the college. I played the piano and sang in a trio and the four men had a quartet. So, you know, there, they, there were limitless opportunities to serve the Lord and I'm thankful for those. And the souls to think about, although the sun, the moon and the stars are in his care. How wonderful, wherever you may just go, by a wish, it's her beware. It matters to him about you, your problems, your heartaches he shares. Regardless of what you may do, he wants of you, he cares. Yes, it matters to him about you. Believe it because it is true. Lean on his hand, he'll understand. For it matters to you and you and you and you. Yes, it matters to him about you. Mm. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. And tell me real quick, tell me about the chair you're sitting in. Well, this chair was sister's chair that she sat in. Uh, I have never been in this chair before today, so this is quite an honor. Um, and, but I had a little chair that when I would sit by her on the platform sometime, not all the time, but every once in a while, she'd ask for me to come up and sit by her. And of course, you, they, you don't leave little three and four year olds up there very long, <laughs> but yeah, it was really, um, really an honor. And uh, I loved her and, uh, and our whole family did. So we, we were family here and that was a wonderful part of it. What was the impact, I just want to do a follow-up question, what was the impact on you personally, on um, the Foursquare Church, on the body of Christ as far as, you know, the Charismatic Church in general, with her passing? Oh, uh, it was a shock and a sad day. You know, uh, we know now that God's timing is, is most important in our lives, but at that time of our life, it was really a shock to uh, know that I think, I believe I was 19 uh, when she passed away, but my whole life had been built around church here, the activities uh, from youth group, to camp and and everything that we did, we were we were involved in something often in most days, um, and uh, then when you saw the people that lined up for the I don't know how many thousands of people that lined up to come in when they um, had her laid there in the temple. Um, it, it was it was really a shock and a loss, but you know God. Um, it was never the same without Sister, but uh, but there were new things that God brought in. Um, the Rustoys were here. His uh, Mrs. Rustoy wrote, um, wrote a lot of beautiful music, um, different ones. I can't even remember all the the ones that were here after that, but. Um, the, uh, the, it was a loss and it, um, I think it um, resounded all over the country and to the mission fields uh, that, that she was gone. But I think people were even more challenged to do the work that she had started and keep it going. A key was in or anything and sang it and he said, where'd you get that song? I said, <laughs> he gave it. So this is one Gail and I will do. And it's called You Can life Have Life at Its Best. Whoa. That's a word. You can have life 